I started this crazy coding journey over 13 years ago. In that time, I've gone from programming Lego robots to becoming a Facebook software engineer, and I've learned a lot along the way. Here are 13 of those lessons. Let me know in the comments which of them resonate most with you, or if you have any other lessons you'd like to share. Lesson number one, code is not the product. Nobody is impressed by your 200 line, complex, specialized sorting algorithm. Just call the built-in sort function. Despite what coding interviews might have you believe, most of the time, the best solution is the one that is the simplest. This will save you time in implementing your code, and it will save future engineers time in maintaining it. There is, of course, a time and a place for this perfectionist, super optimized code. But in most scenarios, you should save yourself the time and use that time to build out more features. Code is not the product. It just needs to get the job done. Lesson number two, don't always follow the trends. The most important things to learn are the fundamentals of software development, and these set you up to easily learn whatever trendy tech you might need when you actually need it. But most of the time, you'll never need it. I've literally made projects in PHP before. You know why I did that? Because sometimes PHP is just the right choice or the easiest option for a particular job. Lesson number three, put yourself first. In the words of the great philosopher Aubrey Graham, you only live once. That's the motto. Focus on what you want, not on what the world tells you that you should want. As we have seen over the last few months of this totally not a recession recession, companies will let you go the second it doesn't make economic sense for them to employ you. That's just how the free market works. As a result, you shouldn't feel any more loyalty to them than they show to you. Don't be afraid to take a leap. Although, also make sure that you're making logical, calculated life decisions because oftentimes the best decision for you won't involve any change at all. Lesson number four, don't reinvent the wheel. Libraries and frameworks exist for a reason. Time wasted rebuilding what could have been a single import statement is time taken away from building other features. Your users do not care that you implemented your own animation library. Just import one. It will probably end up working better anyways. Lesson number five, testing is overrated. I know, controversial opinion, and this is not to say that you shouldn't write any tests, but very few code bases actually need 100% test coverage. Tests have diminishing returns as you write more of them, and at some point, the value of working on something else will outweigh the value of writing another test. And at that point, the correct utilitarian decision is to work on those new things, even if there are small risks attached to doing that. That said, this one will depend greatly on the type of work that you actually do, and potentially the sensitivity of any data that you are working with. Lesson number six, don't get attached to your current stack. No need to pigeonhole yourself as an XYZ developer. Just be a developer with some expertise in those certain areas, but also have a willingness to learn new things. Whatever your favorite stack is, it's probably going to be completely obsolete in the next five to 10 years, and you don't want to go obsolete with it. Lesson seven, listen to wisdom. Tech companies are full of these brilliant 20 something year olds potentially with a lot to teach you. But even more important are these senior developers who've been through various tech waves and can really share the most wisdom both about coding and just about life. That said, don't be afraid to question their ideas as well. They are human too, and the best ideas come through questioning and healthy debate. Lesson eight, question ideas, not people. This goes right in line with the previous lesson. My favorite brainstorming technique is to have everybody simultaneously put ideas out on a whiteboard so that nobody knows who came up with what idea. This way you can debate and question ideas detached from the people who wrote them and their emotions. It's not a competition to come up with the best idea individually, but rather software development should be treated as a team sport where everybody works together. Lesson nine, double your timeline. However long you think that project's going to take, it's going to take twice that. And if you are going to slip, slip big. The worst thing you can do is to keep saying something is just going to take a couple more days over and over and over again. If you need another two weeks, ask for at least another two weeks. But even better is to underpromise in the beginning so that you can over deliver on those expectations that you set in the end. Lesson 10, freedom is the most important company benefit. 
tech companies are going to throw huge salaries, free meals, and probably ping pong tables at you. And those things are great and they shouldn't be taken for granted. However, the most valuable thing an employer can give you is freedom. I would happily give up some of those benefits in exchange for the freedom to work where I want and when I want. I found this personally in my life when I joined Algo Expert last year. They provide this freedom and as a result, I don't have to plan my life around work. Instead, I plan my work around my life and that's been a huge quality of life improvement for me and it's something that I will greatly value whenever I'm deciding between future work opportunities. Lesson 11, strive to be the dumbest person in the room. You'll learn and grow the most when you're around people who know more than you do. Particularly find people who are at the place that you would like to be in the next few years and try to learn from them. Really pick their brains and try to figure out how they got to where they are. Just like you don't need to reinvent the wheel when you're coding, you don't need to reinvent the wheel with your career path either. Lesson 12, don't believe everything you read online, but like particularly with regard to code. Copy and pasting random stack overflow answers is a key part of every software engineer's job, but it's also a key source of bugs. Make sure that you are vetting the answers and convince yourself that they are actually correct. As a bonus, when you do this, it's a great way to learn because you are actually thinking about the tough problems instead of just blind copying from some answer from 10 years ago online. Lesson 13, consistency is key. Any developer on your team should know where to look for any file, not because they've looked at all the code before, but because it all follows a logical structure. And within those files, it should be easy to parse the code because it all looks like other code. If every developer just does their own thing, then you'll end up with this code base that's hard to maintain and impossible to work in. So let me know what your thoughts are on these tips. And if you have any others, make sure to subscribe for future content and I will see you in the next video.